It's been a very interesting couple of weeks on the ultra running world stage. The two top European races have seen some amazing and some disappointing results. Both UTMB and Tour de Gion produced some remarkable racing this past month and we'll have a look at Tour de Gion in a second. But the UTMB men's race was particularly strange. So I thought we'd spend a few moments having a look at the top two ranked runners in this year's race. I was in the town of Saint Gervais on the Friday evening of the UTMB race. That's 21 kilometers into the run, so fairly early. I was there when Jim Wormsley and Tom Evans came through and I managed to run a few hundred metres with both runners. Of course Jim Wormsley won last year's race in a course record time so arguably he had nothing to prove this year. Tom on the other hand having won Western States and been on the podium at UTMB before clearly stated that he was out for the win this year. Let's have a little look at Tom Evans coming out of the aid station at San Gervais. Now he doesn't acknowledge me, but that's absolutely fine. You could say he's focused, but to me, he doesn't look relaxed, especially this early on in the race. He looks a little overstressed and as though he's working a little bit too hard. Now in hindsight, we know that Tom Evans pulled out of the race at around 100K citing stomach issues. I do wonder if the problems he had taking on nutrition could be attributed to stress and the pressure he was under. There were a lot of eyes on him and a lot of expectation to perform. Running alongside him, I really wanted to just say to him, just relax, calm down. But ultimately I felt it wasn't my place to tell Tom Evans how to run his race. Now let's compare Tom's demeanour to that of Jim Wormsley in this clip of Jim running out of Saint Gervais. Jim immediately acknowledges me and smiles. He looks relaxed and at ease as he runs through the town two hours into the race. But of course Jim also dropped from the race this year citing an ongoing knee issue. But was he too relaxed and did he not want it enough? It was really strange how virtually all the big names dropped from UTMB this year. Not only Tom and Jim, but the likes of Pau Capel, Tim Tollefson, Jermaine Granger, Sage Canaday, leaving relative newcomer Vincent Bouillard to win the race. And I did manage to run with Vincent as he ran towards Valassine in the final part of the race. Right, we're at the bottom of the climb at Valassine. The leader and the winner of UTMB, a uh, young guy, new guy, Vincent Bouillard. He's coming down the hill. He's got one more climb to do. I'm not offering any particular explanation as to why this might have happened. Uh, it wasn't particularly hot, it was hot, but not overly hot, I don't think. Nothing that they couldn't have coped with. Um, the DNF rate overall wasn't that much higher than it is normally. So perhaps it was just one of those things. But you can be darn sure that uh, both Jim and Tom will likely be back next year. By the way, if you're finding this video useful or interesting or entertaining, then please do consider subscribing to the channel. We're over 50,000 now on the way to 60,000 subscribers. Be great to have you on board as a member of the Film My Run community. Tour de Gion takes place out of Courmayeur, Italy, just a couple of weeks after the UTMB bandwagon has left town. The stellar event of the week is the 330 kilometer run through the Aosta Valley, a beautiful race loved by many and its reputation has really grown in recent years. This year the race did have an established elite winner of the men's race in Francois Dehain, who became only the second Frenchman to win the race in 15 years. The women's race was won by Katharina Hartmuth. She came second last year to Courtney DeWalter at uh, UTMB and became the first woman to complete Tour de Gion in under 80 hours. 
two friends of the channel, Sabrina Virgie and Claire Banworth, came in second and third respectively. Of course, our friend Damien Hall was back for another crack at the Tour 330 and came in a credible fifth position, unfurling a banner on the finish line, bemoaning the fact that another of his favourite races has partnered with a high carbon sponsor, in this case Ford. It looks like Damien will have to find yet another race to fall in love with next year. There were, however, two notable DNFs at this year's race. John Kelly, who famously finished the Barclay Marathons, arguably the toughest race in the world, for a third time this year, had a stinker in the race that he says he loves but refuses to love him back. He says he suffered from sleep deprivation on the very first night, which led him to neglect his nutrition and hydration and ultimately led him to drop out of the race a few hours later. Then, arguably the most famous of all 20 Barclay Marathon finishers, Jasmine Paris, had to pull out of her first attempt at the Tour. Now, after searching online, I couldn't find a reason why she pulled out, so I ended up messaging her directly and she was kind enough to respond. She said that she just had a bad day at the office and she maybe had a virus going into the race. She was up with the leaders early on, but then eventually started walking and walked for 24 hours before eventually dropping from the race. As with Tom Evans and Jim Wormsley at UTMB, I am 99.9% .9 convinced that we will see Jasmine Paris and John Kelly back at Tour de Gion sometime next year or the year after. So incredible results for some and disappointing and frustrating results for others in the past few weeks at arguably Europe's two biggest races. Now, as far as I'm concerned, I ran OCC at UTMB Week this year, and that video will be out in the next couple of months. Uh, I'm also working on my video of the Swiss Peaks 100 DNF, so look out for that soon. If you have found this video useful, please do consider subscribing to the channel, share the video with your friends, and I will see you guys on the start line next time. Take care. Bye.